G'day and welcome to Matt's Workshop. Today I'm going to be installing a laser beam and red dot combiner on my laser machine. This is going to replace this side mounted red dot pointer that's sitting on the side of the nozzle and this will give us a more accurate location of where the laser is going to fire because the laser beam and the red dot pointer will be combined at mirror number one. So hope you enjoy the video. I'm not going to go into the full science on how this system works other than to say that the beam combiner uses a lens called a zinc selenide or selenide lens. The optical light will reflect or deflect off that lens but non-visible wavelengths of the CO2 laser will actually pass through it. So this allows us to combine the non-visible light and the visible light at mirror number one so that when it comes down to the workpiece after mirror three that those two beams are in the same spot. So when we fire the laser, the red dot point is also going to be at the same spot. So it gives us an indication on where we can start our lasering work. So if you're interested in getting one of these laser beam combiners, uh, I got mine from Cloudray Laser and I've included the uh, link to their product in the description below. So what comes in the kit? Well, the parts I have are set B of the Cloudray E-Series first mirror mount beam combiner. It includes these items, the mirror mount and base. It comes with a red dot pointer, the laser beam combiner lens, and a Cloudray laser 25 mil mirror. So what I'm gonna do now before I go any further is put these lenses in place. So first of all, I've got the lens laser beam combiner unit and I'm going to put that into the first socket here. They are held in with these little plastic screws. They have a little a Phillips head on the end so just loosen them up. Using the paper that came with it you don't want to get fingerprints on there if you can help it. It will slot in. Just, just using the paper, push it into place. And then re-tighten the screws, but be careful not to over-tighten. You want it just to be holding. You don't want to have it putting too much pressure and wrecking the lens. And just carefully check to make sure that it's not going to fall out. It's all good. So the next mirror I've got is uh, this laser mirror and that will go into the mirror mount. So take the ring out. Again using the tissue. Pop the mirror in. The mirror will go in face down. So reflective side is pointing towards the other lens we put in and then tighten this up. So the mirror is in and the beam combiner lens is in. So the next thing we need to do is mount the red dot. The red dot gets mounted through the side here and gets tightened up with this one here. Now we can adjust that red dot position later on when it's inside the machine by using these little uh, adjusting screws. So this is mirror number one. The laser tube is firing here, hitting it at uh, 45 degrees and bouncing the beam 90 degrees towards the front of the machine. This laser beam combiner is uh, just uh, having a look at things and how it's going to fit. This laser beam combiner are larger than this current unit so obviously it will not fit without some alteration so it's quite tall. The other issue is that if we have it in this configuration like this uh, the laser head is too close to mirror number one here. We need to move the laser tube back in this direction so that this will fit. So to do that I'm going to need to loosen the uh, mounting screws for the laser tube just loosen those and if we go along in this direction you'll see that I have the enclosure on the end 
and that houses the last part of the laser and I believe it finishes about here so I need to see whether it's safe to do so by moving the tube back in that direction three and a half inches roughly nine centimeters so I've got plenty of room to be able to move it the distance I need so I've removed the um, the mounts the electrical tape that holds the rubbers in and now I'm going to slide this back so I've been able to keep the rubbers in place and just slide carefully I've now got plenty of room here so the next step is to remove the laser mount here so I'm going to have a look at two options the first one is see if I can take this mirror out and replace it with the beam combiner set on the same mounting pole if that's not possible we'll have to look at options for that mounting pole okay so with this mirror out yeah just see if this um, pole comes out so as you can see the mounting pole is quite a lot different in size now we can loosen these screws if we loosen those screws we should be able to feed the base up to the desired height but it would mean either having this cut off or having a hole drilled in so that this will feed lower inside the machine i think it's easier in this uh, scenario to see if we can get this pole off and use the existing mount that's there and thankfully it easily it easily comes off so we can unscrew that pop this new one in let's have a look at this so this is the base that was in the machine now there's no screws in the machine able to bring the base in this direction but I need to move the base in this direction I've moved the laser tube out of the way now what I need to do is figure out how far I have to move the base so if the base was in this position this is the first mirror that we had the, the one that without the beam combiner on it and it was sitting central to there if I was to put the new unit in its same position I don't know if you can see it from the top but there's quite a big difference in the location of the mirror so in a matter of fact if I was to line it up the mirror will be sitting off to the side which makes it then out of a line to mirror two so I need to find out the difference uh, that I need to move this base so that when I put the new mirror in it will be in the same position so what I've been trying to explain there briefly was we had our laser tube sitting very close to the original mirror number one this circle here represents the mounting pole so if we move the laser tube out of the way you can see still the laser beam will still hit onto mirror one and it's all in alignment through to mirror two and three if we use the mirror combiner unit and use the same pole you will be able to see that if this laser beam fires it will fire past there hit the mirror and actually miss mirror number two so what we need to do is move it so that it's in the same position as the previous mirror number one and then move the laser tube back as close as we can that way the mirror alignment all stays in place okay so I've moved the laser tube back out of the way I can move it further away if I need to for the other screw I need to remount this in its new position Get it level with the end of the tube here so it passes through the center as best as possible okay now once this is positioned put it back in the right orientation and tighten up these mounts and as you can see 
from the tape mark that I put on there before, we've actually had to move the laser back quite a bit. I'm going to tighten them all the way up yet, I've still got to do a mirror alignment. I may still have to move that around. One thing I will do is put in the red dot pointer. One thing I do notice is this uh, red dot pointer has got a lot of movement in it, so I may have to look at securing that just a little bit better. But that's the setup. We have the red dot pointer at the back here, pointing through to here. Combiner lens bounces across and then back again. The laser beam will fire through here, straight through onto this mirror and then down to the back. So it was time to remove the old red dot pointer from the carriage. So I removed the pointer, disconnected the wires, removed those wires from the carriage rails and then fed them through to the back of the machine. Now these two wires connected to the 5 volt power supply and I used those to power the new red dot laser. So the final step is to do a mirror alignment. Once the mirror alignment's done, using the pulse on the laser, line up at mirror one, the red dot pointer at the same position that the laser is pulsing. And then you can fine tune where the red dot goes, but uh, it should follow the same path as the laser beam through to mirror two and three and down the nozzle. Once it's done that, you can see the red dot pointer is coming straight out the bottom of the nozzle. You can move it uh, wherever you like. The red dot pointer will stay the same. If you raise the bed and lower the bed, the red dot pointer won't move, which is a lot better than the previous setup. So thanks for visiting Matt's workshop. So that's been a great little improvement to my machine. I'm looking forward to uh, putting a few more upgrades in there shortly. I'm going to be doing the ultimate air assist as well as a new laser power supply installation. So those videos are coming up soon. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, press, press the subscribe button and put the notification bell on to be notified of new videos as they are released. Uh, all my social media and web links are in the description below as well as the link where you can purchase this laser beam combiner unit from Cloudray. And until next time, take care. Cheers.